Hello everyone. Today's my lecture is on organization of the parasympathetic division. It is also known as craniosacral outflow because the fibers of this division arise from the brain and sacral segments of spinal cord. Parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system that is known as craniosacral outflow because the fibers of this division that arise from the brain or cranium and sacral segments of spinal cord so that it is known as craniosacral outflow cranial outflow or cranial portion of the parasympathetic division arises from the brain stem and it innervates the blood vessels of head and neck and many thoraco abdominal visceral organs cranial outflow that includes the following cranial nerves 3rd 7th 9th and 10th cranial nerves oculomotor facial glossopharyngeal and vagus nerve Preganglionic fibers of these cranial nerves arise from the neurons that are situated at two different levels tectal or midbrain outflow and bulbar level or bulbar outflow that includes 7th 9th and 10th cranial nerve tectal outflow that includes 3rd cranial nerve Preganglionic fibers are longer and reach the postganglionic neurons which are situated within the organs or close to the organs innervated by these nerves so these are the parasympathetic division here the preganglionic fibers are long and postganglionic fibers are short as compared to preganglionic neurons preganglionic fibers are myelinated but the postganglionic fibers are non myelinated tectal or midbrain outflow group of the cells forming edinger westphal nucleus of the third cranial nerve that give rise to tectal fibers fibers from this nucleus end in the ciliary ganglion end from the ciliary ganglion post ganglionic fibers arises and that supply the sphincter pupillae and ciliary muscles bulbar level or bulbar outflow pre ganglionic fibers are the fibers of the 7th 9th and 10th cranial nerve which arise from the nuclei present in the medulla oblongata fibers of the 7th cranial nerve supply the lacrimal nasal submaxillary and sublingual glands preganglionic fibers of this nerve end in the sphenopalatine ganglion and submaxillary ganglion this one is a submandibular ganglion post ganglionic fibers from the sphenopalatine ganglion that supply lacrimal glands and nasal glands post ganglionic fibers from the submaxillary ganglion that supply sublingual and submaxillary glands fibers of the ninth cranial nerve that supply parotid gland preganglionic fiber synapses with the neurons of otic ganglion so this one is the otic ganglion post ganglionic fibers from the otic ganglion that supply parotid gland fibers of the 10th cranial nerve supply the visceral organs of the body and preganglionic fibers that terminate in the ganglia which are situated on or near the organs postganglionic fibers from the ganglia that supply the organs 
In vagus nerve supplies almost all the organs that are present in the thorax and abdomen but not the pelvic organs. Then sacral outflow or sacral portion of the parasympathetic division. Sacral outflow or sacral portion of the parasympathetic division arises from the sacral segments of the spinal cord. It innervates the smooth muscles forming the wall of the viscera and glands such as large intestine, liver, spleen, kidney and bladder and genitalia. Preganglionic fibers arises from the anterior gray horn of second, third and fourth sacral segments of the spinal cord and it forms a pelvic nerve or nervi regions. These are so preganglionic fibers arises from the second, third and fourth sacral segments of the spinal cord and it forms a pelvic nose. Fibers end on the postganglionic neurons which are situated on or near the visceral organs. Fibers from the postganglionic neurons supply descending colon, rectum, urinary bladder, internal sphincter, urethra and accessory sex organs. Sacral parasympathetic fibers supply those visceral organs which are not supplied by vagus nerve. Now most of the visceral organs have a dual innervation. For example are supplied by both the sympathetic and parasympathetic division of autonomic nervous system. The two divisions that produce antagonistic effect on each other and provide a very fine degree of the control over the effector organ. Some of the visceral organs are innervated by one division of the autonomic nervous system only. For example, uterus, adrenal medulla and most of the arterioles are innervated by the sympathetic division only. And the glands of the stomach and pancreas that are innervated by the parasympathetic division only. In case of the sphincter's muscle, both adrenergic and cholinergic innervation are excitatory, but one supplies the constrictor component of the sphincter and other one supply the dilator component of the sphincter. Almost all the visceral organs are supplied by both sympathetic and parasympathetic division of autonomic nervous system. And the two divisions produce antagonistic effect on each organ. When the fibers of the one division supplying to an organ that is sectioned or affected by lesion, the effect of the fibers from the other division on the organ become more prominent. Then autonomic neurotransmitters, parasympathetic fibers, preganglionic fibers that releases acetylcholine and postganglionic fibers that release acetylcholine and sympathetic fibers that includes preganglionic fibers that release acetylcholine and postganglionic fibers that norepinephrine mainly or epinephrine also. All the preganglionic fibers sympathetic as well as parasympathetic release the acetylcholine. All the postganglionic parasympathetic fibers release acetylcholine. Most postganglionic sympathetic adrenergic fibers release norepinephrine. A few postganglionic sympathetic or cholinergic fibers release acetylcholine. So cholinergic fibers. The postganglionic sympathetic cholinergic nerve fibers supplying the sweat glands, blood vessels in the heart and skeletal muscles.
now about the acetylcholine that is a cholinergic neurotransmitter and it possesses excitatory function it produces the excitatory function by opening the ligand gated sodium channel what is the source of acetylcholine so acetylcholine it is the transmitter substance at the neuromuscular junction and synapse and it is also released by the following nerve endings free ganglionic parasympathetic nerve post ganglionic parasympathetic nerve pre ganglionic sympathetic nerve and post ganglionic sympathetic cholinergic nerves nerves supplying eccrine sweat glands sympathetic vasodilator nerves in the skeletal muscle then nerves in the amacrine cells of the retina and many regions of the brain so cholinergic neurons neurons which secrete acetylcholine at their nerve endings examples include all the preganglionic autonomic parasympathetic as well as sympathetic endings post ganglionic parasympathetic endings post ganglionic sympathetic endings which innervate the sweat glands skeletal muscle blood vessels means sympathetic vasodilator nerves neuromuscular junction many parts of the brain especially the cerebral cortex thalamus and forebrain nuclei and endings of the some amacrine cells present in the retina then synthesis of acetylcholine so acetylcholine is synthesized in the cholinergic nerve endings synthesis takes place in the exoplasm and acetylcholine is stored in the vesicles it is synthesized from the acetyl coenzyme a it combines with the choline in the presence of the enzyme choline acetyl transferase to form the acetyl choline so acetyl coenzyme a combines with the choline the presence of the acetyl choline acetyl transferase it forms acetyl choline acetyl choline is divided into choline and acetate in the presence of the acetyl choline esterase action of the acetyl choline is short lived within the 1 millisecond after the release from the vesicles it is hydrolyzed into acetate and choline by the enzyme acetyl choline esterase and this enzyme is present in the basal lamina of the synaptic cleft effect of the acetyl choline of localized cholinergic discharge are generally discrete and short lasting because the acetyl choline is rapidly removed from the nerve endings due to high concentration of the acetyl choline esterase at cholinergic nerve endings adrenal medullary hormones are the amines derived from the catechol and so these hormones are known as catecholamines catecholamines secreted by the adrenal medulla adrenaline or epinephrine noradrenaline or norepinephrine and dopamine synthesis of catecholamines catecholamines are synthesized from the amino acid tyrosine in the chromaffin cells of adrenal medulla these hormones are formed from the phenylalanine also but the phenylalanine has to be converted into tyrosine so stages of the synthesis of catecholamines first of all formation of tyrosine from phenylalanine in the presence of phenylalanine hydroxylase then second step is uptake of tyrosine from the blood into the chromaffin cells of the adrenal medulla by active transport then conversion of tyrosine into dopamine 
और डोपा डाइहाइड्रोक्सी फिनाइल एलेनिन बाई हाइड्रोक्सीलेशन इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ टायरोसिन हाइड्रोक्सीलेस डी कार्बोक्सीलेशन ऑफ डोपा इन टू डोपा मीन बाय डोपा डी कार्बोक्सीलेस एंट्री ऑफ द डोपा मीन इन टू ग्रेन्यूल्स ऑफ द क्रोमेफिन सेल्स हाइड्रोक्सीलेशन ऑफ द डोपा मीन इन टू नोर एड्रेनालिन बाय द एंजाइम डोपा मीन बीटा हाइड्रोक्सीलेस रिलीज ऑफ द नोर एड्रेनालिन फ्रॉम द ग्रेन्यूल्स इन टू द साइटोप्लाजम methylation of the noradrenaline into adrenaline by the most important enzyme that is known as phenylethanolamine n methyl transferase pnmt and pnmt that is present in chromaffin cells metabolism of the catecholamines 85% of the noradrenaline is taken up by sympathetic adrenergic neurons and remaining 15% of the noradrenaline and adrenaline are degraded stages of the metabolism of the catecholamines methoxylation of the adrenaline into metaadrenaline and nor adrenaline into meta nor adrenaline in the presence of catechol o methyl transferase comt meta adrenaline and meta nor adrenaline are together called metanephrines oxidation of the metanephrines into vinyl mandelic acid vma by monoamine oxidase removal of the catecholamines so catecholamines are removed from the body through the urine in three forms 15% as a free adrenaline and free noradrenaline 50% as a free or conjugated meta adrenaline and meta noradrenaline 35% as a vinylyl mandelic acid vma effect of the norepinephrine are more prolonged than acetylcholine as it spreads further in the blood the epinephrine and dopamine come from the adrenal medulla while norepinephrine diffuses from the adrenergic nerve endings so adrenergic neurons so neurons which secrete norepinephrine or epinephrine at their endings examples include post ganglionic sympathetic endings other than above cerebral cortex hypothalamus cerebellum brain stem spinal cord and adrenal medulla some autonomic fibers release neuropeptide besides the classical neurotransmitters and this include adenosine triphosphate the small vesicles of the post ganglionic nor adrenergic fibers contain atp the low frequency stimulation causes atp release second one is galenin vasoactive intestinal peptide calcitonin gene related peptide or substance p that are released along with the acetylcholine on the sympathetic stimulation to sweat glands third one is neuropeptide y it is another transmitter present in the large vesicles of the post ganglionic sympathetic endings that supplies to the vasculature of the viscera skin and skeletal muscles and that releases on high frequency stimulation in addition to norepinephrine this is the list of the reference books Thank you very much